All right, so hi everybody. Today we are going to be talking about how do you start conversations and how do you have effective conversations with people that you are seeking advice from, vendors, or if you're looking for a mentorship. Specifically in the knowledge graph space, that's where my perspective comes in, but also from just an information perspective in general. It's not just about me and my uh, mentorship and, and my consultants uh, kind of experience this. I think I've heard from everybody. We, we often come across these kinds of conversations. So this is to help you with those conversations with whoever you might be asking for advice and for vendors when you start uh, your project with them. There are good practices to follow and I hope this video helps you with that. I have a lot of people that ask me questions about these topics. I'm very happy to answer them. But when you come in not prepared and asking me very, very generic questions, it's really hard for me to understand how I can help you best. Now, I am not a full-time consultant at all. I have a full-time job, but I do often do consulting. I also just generally answer questions. And if you have some, put them in the comments below because I do answer them here and I also answer them on LinkedIn. So generally, you're going to be looking at the who, what, when, where, why, and sometimes how, not always how. So the most common questions that I get are, hey, I'm interested in learning more about semantics and knowledge graph. Uh, that's wonderful, I'm happy to hear that. But what about knowledge graphs and semantics are you interested in? What about information architecture are you interested in? Now, you might not know enough about these areas to really answer that question, but what you can do is have a very general usage statement. I am a person that works with unstructured data in the military area, or I am in the marketing area, or I am in medical. Whatever the case is, understanding the context is really helpful when you're asking questions. The next thing is, what are you actually trying to do with this information? So. Again, you might not know enough about this technology to answer that question, but what you can do is what are the questions that you're trying to answer? Remember, we had a whole video up here where we were talking about, you know, how do you set up your first ontology or knowledge graph project? That's a good video to watch through before you start to talk to a consultant. Uh, but some of these might be, we have a lot of assets in our internal repository and we want a better way to search for it. Okay, that's that's really good for me as a consultant to understand because it means I understand that it's an internal search. I also understand the end result is to retrieve an asset, whether it's an image, a video, or a document or a data set. Um, this would be different than if you said, I am trying to create an external search where maybe you're working with um, information that is for risk assessment, or you're doing something with investment opportunities or some kind of um, analytical aspect where people are going to be asking questions or they're going to have a specific need outside of just, I want to find an article, or I want to find a video, or I want to find a pair of shoes. These, these are you know very common, but you have to understand which is the aspect um, that you are really going to be targeting. And that's what you need to communicate very early on in the conversation. Another thing to keep in mind with the what is, do you have a budget or not? Sometimes you can't disclose what that budget is, that's fine but uh, make sure that you're at least upfront whether this thing that you're looking at has a budget or not. That's specifically helpful when you're talking to um, a vendor. So another thing that you should probably have is who is going to be using this system? Is this a system that is going to be used by internal uh, machine learning experts and, and analysts and, and people that are manipulating and dealing with the data and finding insights within it? Is it something that's going to be used by external customers? Is it going to be um, used by external other businesses, the B2C or B2B kind of situation? Or is it gonna be used by both? Um, a lot of people do try to use the same search engine for both their internal and external. If you are dealing with either internal or external, you really do wanna understand what that persona is. Again, here's a whole video on personas. So once you understand the who, 
And you've already said the what. I actually usually do the what before the who in this scenario because normally the people that are contacting me are not necessarily on the business side. They're usually people that are on the technology side. So who, what, when? When are you trying to start this project? Do you need to start a project? Are you just trying to find out information to understand if this is a technology that you want to further explore? Telling me some of that information early on will let me know if the advice that I'm giving you is, is going to be used to, to purchase something or to start a project, or is it just something to help you understand something better? That's also good to know. And then where, where is this going to be deployed? We said if it's internal or external, that matters, but also is it going to be on the cloud or is it gonna be on-prem? Now, when you're talking about the where to a vendor, you do need to be more specific. Make sure that you have all of your components in your architecture listed out. Uh, preferably with who's working on them, when are they enacted, what does the pipeline look like, all that good stuff. That's always helpful when you're talking to a vendor. It also helps to understand how big is the data set that you're working with. So when you are asking questions, the answer that I give you can be very different if you tell me that you're working with video assets but you only have 10,000 of them. That is going to lead me to um, give different responses to your questions than if you said, I have three terabytes of data and it's all unstructured and um, it's in very poor uh, condition. It's not even XML, it's not even OCR, it's just flat images. All of those things are very important to document when you're talking to somebody to get advice because it really helps the person you're asking, if it's me or any other person that you're asking for advice, so that we're not leading you astray because we didn't have a lot of those facts. Is why are you trying to do this? So there's obviously a pain that you're having today, whether it's inefficient searches or people can't find things. This, this has a lot to do with the what, what are you trying to do? Um, but the why is more about um, what is the intent behind what you're trying to do. So the last is how. So how are you going about fixing this problem today? Or are you not trying to fix this problem right now and why? So those are the main things that you need to be prepared with when you are going into a conversation. All right, and here is a bonus round of just a few tips and tricks when you start these kinds of conversations. Very detailed questions coming to you. So oftentimes um, I have people that come to me and ask me for advice and they want an immediate answer without having to answer a lot of questions. And I usually try to still give like, hey, go check this resource out kind of generic things. Um, but if you're not willing to share information, there's not a whole lot that I can do. I, I can't give you advice if I don't know enough information to give you good advice. If you want a generic advice, there are a lot of other places that I can point you to. The other thing to keep in mind is a lot of people also ask me, hey, what's the tool I should use? What's the algorithm that I can use? Uh, what is the uh, best architecture? Something like that. And my answer all of, all of the time is it depends. And, you know, it's something where I think people want very quick answers and they want very quick I don't want to invest a lot of time into this. I really want somebody to just give me the answer. And, and unfortunately, and this might not be a, a popular statement, but you know, you, it's a two way street. You do have to make sure that you are willing to continue this conversation for the, for more than five minutes. Make sure you leave enough time. If you are trying to ask somebody for advice, the other thing is it's okay not to share all the information if you can't, but just be upfront about that. Um, I have worked with a lot of government organizations, a lot of uh, big pharma, people that really can't release all of the information and that is totally fine. Another thing is I am making a lot of these videos and sharing them with people that ask me for advice because honestly, a lot of my video content comes from questions that people ask me and I want to make sure that I can teach others and, and help distribute this kind of information to people. So if you are asking questions, 
and I send you a video, it's not supposed to be, um, you know, self-promoting and it's not supposed to be something that, you know, I'm trying to get the views or anything like that. It's really, I have, I sit down for hours sometimes. I do extensive research for each of my videos and I do that so that if somebody asks me again that same question, I can point them to the video and I always say, look, go and watch this and if you have questions after we can talk because not every video is going to address your needs because I can't make videos on everyone's specific questions. It's really the generalization of those questions. So that's the other thing. If, if I send you to my videos or somebody else's videos, it's not a pass off, it's to say, Here's, here's a book of foundational information. Here is, um, you know, an article or um, a person to follow. It's not meant to deter you. It's meant to give you some foundational information so you can prep questions that are going to be very pertinent. Um, but again, I think a lot of people asking for advice sometimes want a very quick answer. And while I can certainly provide some of that, I can tell you that you need an ELT with a Sparkle endpoint so that you can do a RESTful API to the external link data source. Okay, well, if you didn't know what half of those things were, that's not going to help you. So, <laughs> um, and then the very final thing that I would say is, please be kind. Uh, when you are reaching out to anybody and asking for advice, you might think, well, of course, you're going to be nice to that person. It's not always the case. I've actually been, you know, snubbed, yelled at, ghosted a bunch of times after people have asked me for advice. So again, just be kind and say thank you. I have had people also do that where I help them a lot and then they walk away and they never talk to me again. And... That's not cool. At least say thank you. That's all I ask. All right, so with that, I hope this helps you in your next conversation, whether you're looking for advice, mentorship, or you're trying to work with a vendor. So thank you very much, and I'll catch you next time.